Hi everyone, this is Terry. I wanted to stitch out a sample of one of the semi-automated quilts using Upgrade Kit 2. And what I'm using is just a piece of stabilizer. I do have a sample that I posted to the group showing what I had done as a hexagon. But I want to give you an idea of how I go about measuring. And I do prefer the semi-automated method. I do have a video if you look under upgrades in the playlist upgrades on my YouTube channel showing the method using the snowman. It's not my preferred method because I can do so much more with the semi-automated. So the first thing I want to do is go to the quilting menu. Now, depending on the machine that you have and whether you have upgrade kit one or two, meaning if you have a Luminaire one or a Solaris one, if you, if you purchase a Luminaire one or a Solaris one, you will have these 10 designs or quilting designs. You would not have menu two or three. If you had upgrade kit one, you would have the additional five designs that you see here. If you purchase upgrade kit two, you will have the additional five designs that are 16 through 20. The designs that you see that are multi, actually multicolored designs here are part of upgrade kit two. And there are five designs. The hexagon designs are also part of upgrade kit two. So I'm going to go back to category one. I want to choose one that that is more or less even all the way around. Let's choose design one. All right, now we're going to choose set. Now these are the two methods of split. If you choose the first method, this is going to be the method where you are limited in size. So you can only go to a height of 30 inches and that is with your sashing strip and a width of 19.69 inches. And then you're also going to, to have the measurement that you have right here, which is your border. And that border is up to 3.94 inches, but it changes depending on the hoop that you have. So when you set the settings in, you will want to be mindful of that. I want to return because I don't want to choose that method. I want to choose the semi-automated method. Now what I'm going to enter here, and I'll explain this when we get to the end of the video, is 9.5 and then also 9.5. These are the measurements that I have, and I didn't get the first one, so let me go back, 9.5 set. These are the measurements that I have with my sashing. So this is what my complete design is going to look like. I'm going to use the eight by 12 magnetic hoop from Dime for this simply because I don't have to get up from the machine to hoop. Personally, I like to use a regular hoop on these because you don't have shifting. And I also like the new brother hoop. The next, entry that I need to enter is going to be the width of my sashing and I've determined that my border is going to be 1.5 and I'll choose set. Now I'll go to next. It tells me that I'll have eight pieces to complete this project and I have an option if I have upgrade kit two, I can choose between single run or triple run. In order to expedite this video, I do want it to be a single run, and I will be editing the video during the stitch out so that we can stay within 15 minutes. If you notice right now that these are illustrated in blue, if I really want this to show up on my fabric, I would choose a different thread color. I'll go ahead and choose a dark, color that I think that you're going to be able to see and I'll choose this dark green and choose okay. Red is also a good choice for people to see in videos. 
Now I'll go ahead and choose memory. When you save it to the machine's memory, it writes three files. You'll notice that it gives you the dimensions that you use. In the case of the hexagon, it's going to show you the dimensions that you use for the height of your border as well. You don't see that in this file. So I'll go ahead and select that file. When I do, you'll notice that I have the components of the design. So I have the corners and I have the side pieces, both vertical and horizontal. Now these are embroidery designs. And if you wanted to use them on another project that's not necessarily a, a border session, you can use those. So keep that in mind and you can also resize them. We're going to choose this file and choose set. Now it will open up the semi-automated file and the first message you'll get is how to hoop your fabric. Since this is a rectangle or a square, you're always going to have your fabric aligned in this fashion in the hoop on the corners. If you have a hexagon, the way that you align it is based upon the straight run of the hexagon, meaning your corner would be cut off, but you're always going to align it so that it's matching the inside of your hexagon. They're more or less the same, but you need to think about it. We'll choose OK. Now the, it will tell us that we need to use the move pattern keys to adjust the inside corner of the pattern. And I'll go ahead and choose OK. Let me let you see how I hoop my piece of stabilizer. So this is how I've hooped my piece of stabilizer. I've marked where my binding technically would be, and I've marked all of the lines. But the big thing is I need to have this uh, so that it is parallel to this side, and this is going to be where the sashing strip is that we're going to embroider. We'll choose okay, and the carriage will move into position and we're now ready to stitch the design. Now, what you need to do is realize this needs to be in the upper corner. Let me show you where it's positioned right now on my machine. So you can see it's down here in this lower edge and it needs to move all the way up to the upper corner. In order to move this design to the upper corner, I can move it with my finger, or I can use these jog buttons, but I'll call them jog buttons, and I can move it around to the corner in this fashion. So you need to understand how you can move the designs on your screen. You'll notice down here in the lower quadrant of the screen, it's showing us where we need to match this plus sign, and it needs to be on the inside corner. I've elected to add about an eighth of an inch on the outside of my supposedly piece design because I do not want my stitches to be over my seam. Now that's an election on my part. You don't necessarily have to do that. But what I'll do is now that you know how I'll move these designs, I'm going to let you watch under the needle. So hopefully you can see this. I can change the background color of my projector in my settings pages to either a dark color or a gray or a white. And I believe that was part of update 3.04. But I know I need to move this design up and I want it to be about in this area on my corner. And I do want to move it over just a fraction because I want, want it to be about an eighth of an inch because I've taken in my measurements, I've determined I wanted an eighth of an inch from my quilting seam for my binding. And then I also wanted about an eighth of an inch from what would be the seam line here. So now using those icons that are located down here on the screen, I'm going to look at the upper corner. So let's look at the upper corner and I'll zoom you in so you can see it. We'll move that around. Now you can see right now, 
that this is sitting right here is a quarter of an inch with using this. So that takes me about an eighth of an inch. I can also see that that color is, is projected right now. It's green. I hope you can see that as well. And it appears that you can. Uh, let me try going into my settings and changing the background color to see if it improves it for you. So I'll go to page six of my settings. I'll go to background color and make that white and choose okay. Now, I probably, once I made that change, I think this does improve, improve the overall look. So you can definitely see where this design is. It's about an eighth of an inch from what will be my binding, and it's an eighth of an inch from my seam line. That is my, my um, plan. So right now, this looks like it's perfect. Now what we'll do is we will go ahead, let's move back to the inside corner since I changed the projector and you can see that this is sitting about an eighth of an inch away from, from this crosshair here, or T pattern. Now let's come back and look at the screen. We'll choose okay. Now on this corner, I really don't need to rotate or do anything else un unless I, I feel like this design is not sitting correctly. I can go ahead and I can stitch this design out. So I'm ready to stitch. You'll notice that this, the play button is, is activated and we'll stitch the first portion of the design. Okay, we're now ready to connect the design. Let's go back and look at the screen. Our embroidery is finished. We'll choose OK. Now we're ready to connect to this. You'll notice that it tells us use the rotate keys to adjust the angle and that's so that you stay in alignment with your seam line. When, when you are using fabric and you sew, not all seams are straight. And because of that, you need to be able sometimes to rotate the angle of the design to accommodate that. We're also going to have the ability to adjust the size of the pattern so that the lower left point will be at the inside corner of the next pattern. Now it's showing, so I'll choose okay. And now what I'll do is I'll look at the projection. So I can see, let me zoom you in, and I can see from the projection that it's well past my corner. So I need to shrink this up so that it's about at this point. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is use some of the keys that are available in your rotate menu. Let's look at the screen. So you have these two icons here, and these icons, depending on where your position in your design, will either allow you to shrink the design and make it shorter or make it longer. I want to make my design shorter, and I want the, I went back just a little too far, and I'll show you in just a moment. I want to have about an eighth of an inch. So let me let you see what we have now. So now I have about an eighth of an inch right here. I might move it up just a little bit. And what this will do is it'll give me that measurement that I want to have it away from my, what would be my seam line. If you did not care that your stitching was right up on your seam line, you wouldn't need to make that kind of adjustment. And you can see I've even considered where I want my binding to be and then where I want my design to be right here. So now what I'll do is I'll go back and look at the screen 
And you notice on the screen that you also have these icons here. What this will do is allow you to see your design at various points. So let me take you back. and let you see where the design is. Now I can tell right now that I need to rotate this design because it's coming in to my, what would be a seam line here. And in order to do that, I need to use my rotate keys. We'll use the rotate keys and then we'll also look at all the other adjustments that we can make to this. And remember, this is going to be where my my binding's going to be. My design should be about right where my fingernail is based upon what I selected. So let's go ahead and look at the rotate keys. So with the rotate keys, you can rotate your design to the right 10 degrees, to the left 10 degrees, you can rotate it back to zero degrees. You can rotate it to the right one degree, to the left one degree, and you can also rotate it in fractions of degrees. I'm going to move mine about one degree to the right, and let me move it a couple of fractions of a degree. And what I'm looking at is my seam line. So if my seam line wasn't straight, this is how I can adjust my pattern. Let's look at it now as it's projected. So do you see how nice this is? This is actually a straight edge. So you can tell that this is following that straight edge. I have about an eighth of an inch is what I wanted to have. And then I'll have about an eighth of an inch from my binding. So I have my, my design placed exactly where I want to have it. So I can look at the next thing that I need to look at is whether it's going to meet up with the connection point. Let's look at the screen. So you have a connection point here, but this is down at the bottom. So what we need to do is we need to look at the connection point at the top. And to do that, I like to do that in the Move menu. So we'll choose OK. We can go into Layout. Let's choose Move. Now, you will notice that this design is, is canted a little bit on the screen, and that is because my design, or excuse me, I did not hoop my fabric straight. That's okay with these magnetic hoops or any hoop because you can compensate for that to a certain degree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you watch as I use those jog buttons and I look at this T that is projected right here and see if it's in place. Personally, it looks like it's in place, so let me use the needle down function. It is perfectly aligned to the ending of my last design. So I'm ready to go ahead and stitch this. We need to choose OK. And now we're ready to stitch this portion of the design. We'll now choose OK. Now you'll get the message that it's time to rotate your fabric. Notice it tells us to rotate it 90 degrees because we're working with a rectangle or a square. So I, what I'll do to rehoop this, I'll let you watch, is I'll lift my hoop up. And since I have tear away paper, I'm being somewhat cautious doing this. I place mine over the arm of the machine if it's a large enough hoop. I'll rotate my sample here and rotate it 90 degrees. And then what I'm trying to do is make sure that I have enough room at the, the top to make that corner. And it appears that I do. So I'm, normally whenever you're working with 
with your quilt. You're going to have about four inches of excess batting and backing. With these magnetic hoops from Dime, make sure that your hoop is aligned on the corners and that it's square. And you can pull your fabric so that it's taut. I won't do too much pulling since this is paper. And now it's telling me, use your move pattern keys to align the start point with the end point. So here are those sections, the start and the end. And my goal is to, number one, match it at the previous design, maintain the distance that I want to maintain, which is an eighth of an inch around this corner. If you elect to have your design touching your seam line, that's okay. It's just up to you what, you what appearance you want to have. I'll choose okay. All right, now I need to move this design because let me show you where it is. Right now it's way down here and I need to move it up to this corner. In order to move it to the corner, I'm taking my finger and dragging that design. Now there is a T that is the crosshair and my goal is to get that T right over this last stitch. And you can see it's about an eighth of a of a uh, inch on each side, so it's perfectly placed for me. Let me zoom you in. Now what I want to do, I think I need to move it down just slightly and maybe to the right. Let's go ahead and needle down. And it looks like I need to move over just, just a, a, a bit. So everything looks great here. Let me show you a couple other projections. This is the, the projection at the corner. So it's showing you where that design is. This is on the upper right hand corner and it's showing you the design. So looking at my pretend quilt, here's my quarter inch seam that I'm going to have that's sewing on my binding and I have that eighth of an inch where I wanted it to sit inside so that the binding didn't cover it up. So I'm golden. Let's go ahead and choose okay. Now I have rotate. If I needed to rotate this design to align it, I can do so. I need to pay attention to the corner and the connection. We'll go ahead and again, look at, at the design as it's projected. I'll zoom you in. And I know that it looks like it's straight to me, so I'm okay with, with the way that it looks right now. Now, a, a lot of times you don't need to use Rotate if you have your fabric hooped straight in alignment. I'll choose okay. Now I'm ready to stitch that design. I will tell you that immediately before it changes over to be ready to stitch, you'll sometimes see the design projected maybe over here, but don't worry about that. If you've gone through these steps, you've lined it up. So we'll go ahead. You'll notice that I have a perfect match. Okay, we're now ready to connect the next point. I'll choose okay. It's telling us the same thing that it told us in the previous design. We need to match our end point from the previous design using the rotate keys to adjust the angle. And then we also need to adjust the size so that it meets at this corner. And there's a straight line that comes across at this corner. Remember, I want mine to, to be about one eighth of an inch longer. I'll choose okay. So now I can see where that design is and I can tell that it is too long. So I need to shorten it because I want to bring it back about an eighth of an inch. I'll use the key that is the key with the up arrow. 
and that looks like that's probably projected right where I want it to be. I might move it up just slightly more. Okay, so now um, I'll project that design. <clears throat> and you can see where it's going to stitch out. Let's choose OK. When you choose OK, I like to go back to move. I want to make sure that this is going to line up and that's just the way I am. So I'm kind of a type A personality. So what I want to do is look at the projection look at my design and I can also see that this design is not completely straight. So I need to go back to rotate and move my design so it's shifted out. And I want this line with the red line to be about right here where I have this dot that's in black. Let me move it back so you can see it. So it needs to shift out here and it needs to move back. But before I do that, let me needle down. And that's a perfect connection. I'm going to choose OK. I'll go back into the rotate menu. And with the rotate menu, I want to move back up to that same view that we had a moment ago. And now I'm going to rotate to the right in one degree increments. And let me go ahead and look at the design coming down. You can see that's perfect. So this design is okay. I'll choose okay and I'll choose play. Or excuse me, start. that the dot that I had placed for where I wanted my design to be is absolutely spot on. Okay, if you guess it's time to rotate your fabric or, or in our case, uh, to rotate our stabilizer, Go ahead and choose OK. That's what the, and now we're going to see the instructions for us to rotate. So I'll lift my hoop, place it over the head of my machine, rotate. And when I finish this, what I'll do is I'll tell you the size of the piece of, of stabilizer I'm using. So if you want to try to create your, your own test stitch out, you can do so. We'll choose OK. And now we need to meet the corner design with the last design and choose OK. Right now, it's showing that design right here in the middle of my stabilizer, I want to move it up to this corner. So what I'm doing is taking my finger and dragging it as close as I can get it, you matching up the cross that's at the end. Now to try it, I'll do needle down, needle up, and it looks like it is just about perfect. So it, I'll go ahead and look at the corner of the design and I can see what the corner looks like as well. Now it looks like I need to rotate this design a little and here is the rotate screen. So on the rotate screen you'll pay attention that we need to match those two points. In the case of the corner remember I'm, I want to have about an eighth of an inch because that was my design election. So I'll go ahead and go to rotate. 
and actually I was in rotate. I'm going to rotate this back about a few fractions of a degree. And that looks fairly close. What I'll do is project it. So here's the projection of what it will look like. It's falling in line, going around the corner like I want it. And if I was measuring my binding and an eighth of, of an inch, so it would take it in to about three eighths of an inch, so it's perfect. And we'll choose okay. We're now ready to stitch that stitch. Because I'm stitching this on stabilizer, I have a couple of skip stitches right here, but I can tell you that it actually did stitch in the perfect position. I'll just take a pin and mark that at the end so that it, you can see the continuation. Now we're ready to come down this side of the design. So let's look at the screen. We'll see okay. And now we're ready to use the rotate keys again because we're going to, to match our design to connect with that corner piece and make sure that the corner is going to be horizontally aligned with the seam line. And in my case, remember, I'm taking it down an additional eighth of an inch. So I need to raise this up because it's dropped too low. I'll use the up arrow key that is located just below the 0.1 degree to the left. And I have it where I want it. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and project this design so that we can see what it looks like and whether or not it is falling straight. Let's look at it on the side. And it looks like I need to move it a fraction of a degree to the left. So I'm moving this in 0.1 degree increments. Let's look at it again. And that looks perfect. So now what I want to do is to follow the screen prompt. I'll choose okay. Now I like to make sure that my previous design is connecting. So I go to move and with move, I'll ch check the needle down. Here's my crosshair, I'll needle down. It's perfect. I swipe it because you don't want it to knot up. So I'll choose okay. And now I'm ready to stitch. So we'll go ahead and stitch that design. The pattern has finished, it's now time to connect. You should know that when we choose OK, we need to turn our hoop again. OK, I'll choose OK. And now we need to meet that corner. So we'll go ahead and choose OK. I'll need to move my design up to, in order to meet with the previous design. I'll let you look at it under the needle. I can tell I need to rotate this design some, but you can you can see that it's relatively close. Let me move it in closer. And I'll go ahead and do the needle down. 
It's a stitch off. Okay, I think it's in the perfect uh, position. So I can tell right now that I, I need to rotate this a, a fraction. I'll let you look at the inside corner. And here is the upper corner. And you can tell that it's out of alignment here. So let's just go ahead and go to the rotate screen. On the rotate screen, it's telling me I need to match my design in the corner here in this connection. I'll choose OK. The projector will change to that inside corner. And now what I'm going to do is to rotate this design back about a degree. And let's see. I want to show you one other thing. In this case, I feel like I also need to grow my design because looking at the projection, it looks like my, my design needs to grow a little bit to the right. So this can be done by using this arrow here. This will grow the, de the design slightly to the right and stretch it so that you'll have a perfect design. And you can also change this by shrinking it to the left by moving it back to the left. In my case, I want it to go to the right, so I'll move it to the right some. You should see that it's expanding the size of that design. Now, I'll look at the upper corner of that design and determine if I grew it too much, and I did. So I'll look at that upper corner and I'll see if I grew it too much. So here will be the seam line for my binding. And here is an eighth of an inch. I think that I can actually grow this design slightly more and have it where it's filling in this area. So I'll go ahead and expand it slightly more. Now I have a good eighth of an inch here. I have my design in this corner and I think it looks nice. And this is an example of if, if you didn't have like straight lines as you're working on, on something and possibly I, I didn't have, have this drawn correctly, you have a way of looking at it and adjusting it in the event that your seam lines are not perfect. So we'll go ahead and zoom back out. Choose OK and stitch this corner. Okay, it's time to com complete our embroidery by using OK. I do want to show you something though. There's going to be times whenever you have a thread break or you have to change a bobbin. We'll choose OK right here. And what we're going to do is choose OK one more time and choose OK again and OK one more time. I'm going to go to the plus minus key in Upgrade Kit 2, we have new features added. This means that you can go in, you can back up 10 stitches if you, for instance, if you had skip stitches or if you needed to take care of a thread break or you need change a bobbin. You'll notice you can move back and forth during between the segments. Well, we already stitched this segment, so I'll go back to 8 and I'll choose OK. You'll find this same feature in the hexagon patterns. I'll choose OK. And now it's telling me that I need to move the pattern to align to the previous point. 
So what I'll do, here's my pattern, and I'll look at the previous point, and you can see it has my pattern up here, and it needs to be down here. So this is the last part of my design. I'll move it down and move it to the right using the arrows. I can tell it's crooked, but that's okay. And I'll go ahead and let's move it back a little bit more. Needle down, we'll needle down and then what I want to do is I want to go to rotate. So let's choose okay. It now says it's going to use the rotate keys and then we need to align this endpoint. So to align the endpoint, this is a time that you can shrink this pattern or you can lengthen it so that it will match up with the very first stitch that you had. So the first thing I'll do is I'll rotate my design and I know I need to rotate it to the right. So I'll rotate it in a one degree increment and I want to move up to the top and let you see this. So you can see that my alignment is off, so I'm moving it one degree at a time. Don't pay attention to this line. I need to be about halfway between this line and what would be my binding line. So let me go ahead and move it up in one-tenth of a degree. And that looks like that's about perfect. Now I'm going to look at the bottom. This is going to show me where it thinks my end point is. And the end point is too long. So I need to shorten this design. And I can see my end point right here. I need to move it down and make it slightly longer. And that looks like that's about perfect. I'm going to move it back to the left a fraction of a degree. And I think I have it in the perfect position. Now on your screen, you have this key. This also takes you to the end point in, on your last design. So what I'm going to do is I'll needle down. And I'm perfect. So we'll go ahead and choose OK. And let's stitch our last design. And it's perfect so let me take it to the table and we'll go over everything